Olá, bem-vindos a outro podcast of Portuguese with Carla, podcast 18, 18. I'm Carla Sabala and... And I am Marlon Sabala. Welcome to this podcast. Yeah. So today we have a guest with us and is one of my uh, brothers, Marcio. Want to say hello? How is everyone doing? Good. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. <laughs> Right, so what are we going to do? Are we going to get straight into this? Yes, yeah, so just uh, give us the a bit of a context. So last week, for those who didn't listen to the uh, lesson last week, oh, yeah. where were we? Watching a football game and I was focused on arranging our uh, our holiday. Yeah. And uh, then there was a power outage. Yeah, and, and I, f- uh, I ran down the steps or the stairs and I fell down the stairs and something... Hurt yourself, and we had to make our way to the hospital. So we're at the hospital. We're, we're in the waiting room, waiting room of the uh, hospital. Yeah, uh, there's uh, the transcript is available on ptwoodcar.com slash podcast18. So if you want to follow along, which we do always recommend um, the text, the transcript, then please head over to ptwoodcar.com slash podcast18. So, Carla, if you want to get us started, I think you're starting this one. Yeah. Let me just put a bit Let's of a ambiance. Okay, background noise. Good. Já passaram duas horas e um quarto e já entraram não sei quantas pessoas que chegaram depois de nós. Este pé está cada vez mais inchado. Parece um balão. Senhor João da Silva, ao consultório 5, por favor. Ah, até que enfim. Podes crer. Podem sentar-se. Então, aleijou o pé, não é verdade? Diga-me lá, o que é que aconteceu? Olha, caí das escadas abaixo, é o que aconteceu. Sabe o que foi, senhor doutor? Faltou a luz no hotel enquanto ele via o final do jogo. E no desespero ele foi a correr para a recepção para descobrir o que se passava. Ah, pois, compreende-se. Mas então deixe cá ver. Ai, ai. Vá, depois a mãe compra um chupa-chupa. Queria ver se fosses tu... Bem, está realmente muito inchado, mas não me parece muito sério. No entanto, vamos fazer um raio-x. Alrighty, Mr. Doctor, thank you very much for your help. Very good. I yes. really sound like a doctor, don't I? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. <laughs> Comes naturally. <laughs> so we'll see you well. next week because uh, I'm going to have an x-ray, apparently. That's it. And then we want to see what, uh, the, what the results are. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we'll say uh, goodbye for now. Stay tuned. Cheerio. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's uh, let's translate this into English, okay? Yes. And uh, I'll start. So what I said was two hours and a quarter have gone by, and uh, a number of people who have arrived after us have already been called in. This foot is getting more and more swollen. It looks like a balloon. Then the voice in a loudspeaker. Mr. John de Silva. Or João da Silva mm-hmm. uh, to the consulting consulting office. yeah doctor's office number mm-hmm. five please. Mm-hmm. Then the two lines after that uh, are special, so we're going to tell you about it okay. later. Okay, fim and pode crer, and so then the door closes, yep. and a doctor says, uh, you may "Please sit down. sit down," or you may sit down. Right, so you've hurt your foot, isn't that right? Tell me then, what happened? Mm-hmm. And then I say, well, I fell down the stairs, that's what happened. Yeah, and then I say, you know what it was, Mr. Doctor? There was a power outage in the hotel while he was watching the end of the game and in desperation he went running to the reception to find out what was going on. Doctor says, oh, okay, well that's understandable, but let me take a look at it. And I moan a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I use a little bit of sarcasm. I say, come on, mommy will buy you a lollipop later or afterwards. I would like to see you in my position, mm. I say. And the doctor says, well, it really is very swollen, but it doesn't seem too serious. However, uh, we're going to do an x-ray. That is it. Okay, let's okay. break this down. So let's slowly take you through the whole transcript. Mm-hmm. Good. So you start in Carla. Yeah. So two hours and a quarter have gone by. Já passaram duas horas e um quarto. Have gone by already. Já passaram. 
Já passaram. Já passaram duas horas e um quarto. Notice duas. We have a masculine form for number two and we have a feminine form for number two. Dois being the masculine one. Duas being the feminine because horas is a feminine word. Duas horas. Notice how my S from duas uh, sounds like a Z because the H from the following word is silent, which means that the S from duas is stuck in between two vowels, the A before it and the O after it. Duas horas. E um quarto. Quar quarto being a quarter. 15 That's how we minutes. say the time, isn't it? We say duas horas e quinze, and a quarter. Yeah. Duas horas e um quarto. And quarto also meaning bedroom. And fourth position. Quarto. Yes, true. Já passaram duas horas e um quarto. Duas horas e um quarto. And uh, a number of people, não sei quantas pessoas, have already entered or been called in. Já entraram, already entered or been called in. Já entraram. And again, já entraram. Não sei quantas pessoas. I don't know how many people, meaning a number of people. Não sei quantas pessoas. I guess you, you're pointing upwards, aren't you? In the te when you say não sei quantas, you're yeah, actually probably you fed up putting waiting. to uh, quite a number of them, like a, a reason. Well, yeah, because you can still use that expression, meaning you actually don't know how many people have gone in. But in this uh, context, we mean like a lot of people, a number of people. Yeah. Não sei quantas pessoas. Que chegaram, who or that arrived, que chegaram, depois de nós, after us. Que chegaram, depois de nós, depois de nós. The whole line. Já passaram duas horas e um quarto e já entraram não sei quantas pessoas que chegaram depois de nós. Very good. And I say, este pé está cada vez mais inchado. This foot is each time more swollen. It's our way of saying it's more and, and more. more. Cada vez mais. Cada vez mais. So more and it, more. it gives you the idea of each time, time a time passes, it's getting more and more, whatever Or each time case. you look at it, it's more swollen. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... It signals passage of time. So let's do that. Inchado. Inchado. Swollen. Mais inchado. Cada vez. Each time. Cada vez. Cada vez mais inchado. Este... This, este pé, este pé está, is, este pé está, the whole thing, este pé está cada vez mais inchado, parece um balão, looks like a balloon. And Escala was saying, parece um, because you have a word that finishes in a vowel, the next one starts in a vowel, and so the E is almost lost there in between. So you go straight from the C of the parece to the U. Parece um, parece um balão. So repeat that. Balão. Nasal sound. Balão. Parece um balão. Este pé está cada vez mais inchado. Parece um balão. Ok, then we hear the voice from the other world. Mas não tem jeito. Senhor João da Silva, ao consultório 5, por favor. All right. 
that annoying voice. Hmm. Senhor, so Mr. João da Silva. I guess we should say the Silva is probably the most common. One of the most common yeah. Portuguese I'd be surprised surnames. if it isn't the most. Yeah. Silva. Hmm. Silva. Ao consultório. Depending who you ask, that might be translated clinic or doctor's office. I guess it depends where you live. Consultório. Consultório. And then number five, cinco. Ao consultório, cinco. Literally, we're saying Senhor João da Silva to the consultório, cinco. Mm -hmm. Por favor. Which I'm guessing you're familiar with it by now. Right. And then one of the expressions we've mentioned earlier. Okay. Ah, até que enfim. Good. So this is one of those not in a textbook moment, simply because you probably won't find this in a textbook, but it's very uh, commonly used. So here we go. Até que enfim. The literal meaning. Until that in the end. The colloquial meaning. The expression of relief or tiredness at the end of an unusual or unexpected long wait. An equivalent expression in English could be... Finally or at last. Let's put it in context. When Friday comes, até que enfim é sexta-feira. There you go. Okay, good. Now that's one of the expressions. Até que enfim. So, mm. Carla, do you want to... Yeah. Ah. <laughs> até que enfim. And the que and the enfim. The que ends with a knee, the enfim starts with a knee. The e from que is silent, so how do I pronounce that when I speak at a normal speed? Até que enfim. Or até que enfim. Até que enfim. Até que enfim. Yes. Yeah, and I'm going to give it again. Até que enfim. Até que enfim. Okay. Very good. So we have another one. Ah, yes. So I say then, podes crer. Podes crer. What does that mean? Well, let's go into our not in a textbook moment again. Podes crer. Literal meaning. You can believe it. The colloquial meaning. Expresses enthusiastic agreement with a statement made. Possible equivalent expressions in English. To write. Or believe me. Or you can be sure. And those two at the beginning of a sentence. Let's put that in context. Wasn't that a great party? Podes crer. Okay. So then we go into the uh, room. And the doctor. Do you want to do the doctor? Since my yeah, line is do. coming So next. he says, Podem sentar-se. You both. Uh, vocês, it's not in there, but um, it's the same as if it was. Podem sentar-se. Podem sentar-se. You may sit yourselves, literally. Podem sentar-se. Então, so, alijou o pé, não é verdade? You hurt your foot. Isn't that true? Aleijou o pé. Aleijou. Aleijou o pé. Não é verdade? Isn't that right? Is that right? Não é verdade? Diga-me lá. Tell me then. Digam la. And again, digam la. This word la, we use it so many times. And um, what did you say it was? Pragmatic. It's, yeah, it's word. what they call a pragmatic modal marker. That doesn't mean something. It's it's sort of like easing. expressions of easing? feeling. And yeah, there's various types of, of um, pragmatic words, but that would be an easing one. So it makes speech a little bit more pleasant. Yeah, it's sort of the equivalent of please. So tell me please. Yes, uh, that's what it would be. Uh, o que é que aconteceu? 
Uh, and I think when my brother did this line, he said, o que que aconteceu? So uh, we have mentioned this before, but there's two ways of um, saying this. O que é que? So some say, o que é que aconteceu? And some say, o que que aconteceu? Did you notice the difference? O que é que? O que que? O que é que aconteceu? What happened? O que é que aconteceu? Okay. All right, so my line, I say, um, well, olhe. Olhe literally, of course, is look. look. Um, but in this sense, it becomes one of those feeling words. So it's actually just saying, well, that's the well, basically. Olhe. Olhe. Caí das escadas abaixo, fell uh, down the stairs. Caí. So that's from the verb cair, but put in the past. Caí. Caí das. Caí das. Escadas. Escadas. Abaixo. Abaixo. So that together. Caí das escadas abaixo. That is what happened, I say at the end. É o que? É o que? É o que aconteceu? Although I probably said it, é o que aconteceu. Again, because o Q-U-E ends with a vowel, it sort of becomes silent, and the next word starts with a vowel. So it's almost like you had a K there. O que aconteceu? In this case, é o que aconteceu. All right? So, I think it's your line next, Carla. Yeah, so I said, Sabe o que foi, senhor doutor? Um, you know what it was, Mr. Doctor. Sab. And I've noticed that with uh, most of our verbs, we are missing out the personal pronouns. The I, the he, the you, the she. Uh, if we, I think we have mentioned this before, but oftentimes... Uh, we use uh, our verbs without these. We don't have to say, you know what it was. We just use the actual verb. And the ending of the verb um, gives away what pronoun or to whom we're talking to or to whom we're talking about or about whom we're talking about. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm yeah, no, back to front sense. with my English. I guess the easy way of saying is in English, verbs don't really change except for all the um, second person. He, you know, third person, brother. Yeah. Uh, he does instead of I do. So. That's right. Usually the third person in English has an, an, an S, doesn't it? In yeah. the present tense. He knows, I know. But of course, in Portuguese, but in Portuguese it changes, Portuguese, for, changes for every for, person. Yeah, for most of them. So you don't need the pronoun. You don't need to say oftentimes yeah. who it is that you're referring to because the verb will give it away. Mm. I mean, it's good to learn the pronouns along with the verbs just so you can get used to that. In, but once in, you're comfortable, you can drop it. Yes. I was just going to say, Carla, you, you mentioned the Senor Doctor, uh, Mr. Doctor. I don't think He's that would be an English person. thing. Not really, no. But in Portugal, yes, it's very, actually, very common. Yeah. It's, so you actually put two titles. Yeah. So, because it's somebody, you're approaching somebody in a formal way and he happens to be the doctor. Yes. So, Senor Doctor. Sabe o que foi? You know what it was. Sab o que foi? And again, the E from sab is silent. Then we have a no straight after. So when I say quickly, I may be saying sabuk foi. Sabuk foi, senhor doutor. Senhor doutor. Faltou a luz no hotel. There was a power outage in the hotel. Faltou a luz. Faltou a luz. No hotel. Silent H. Do not go on saying hotel. It's wrong. Okay. I guess we Portuguese don't say hotel a lot. In fact, you've been saying hotel. Hotel. But, But I many, think many I've English heard that even in some English words with a H, sometimes they don't pronounce it. It's like getting dropped. Yeah. As. As in somebody who inherited something. You don't yes. say has. That's for 
your head, your hairs in your head or on your head. Yeah. So, uh, and I've heard that with a hotel. I guess it depends some where. Some people drop it. Where. Maybe it's a regional thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Right. Okay. So, faltou a luz no hotel. No hotel. Enquanto ele via o final do jogo. While he was watching the end of the game. Enquanto. While. Enquanto. Enquanto ele via. Enquanto ele via. While he was watching. Enquanto ele via. O final do jogo. The end of the game. O final do jogo. E no desespero. And in the desperation. E no desespero. Desespero. I know there's two S's there, and they both have two different sounds. It might be a bit of a might be a bit of a tongue twister, but I'm sure you'll be able to do it. So repeat after me once again. Desespero. E no desespero. Ele foi a correr. He went running. Ele foi a correr. Ele foi a correr. Double R, hard, R, and the last R at the end of correr, softer. Correr. Ele foi a correr para a recepção, to the reception. Para a recepção. Para a recepção. Para descobrir, in order to find or to find, to find out. Para descobrir. Para descobrir o que se passava. What was happening? O que se passava? The E from que is silent, the E from the C is silent. So I'll say these words too quickly. O que se passava? O que se passava? So it's like you have two consonants put together. A K and an S. Yeah. yeah. O que se passava? O que se passava? If we're saying it slowly. Okay. Go. So the doctor says, oh, right. It's understandable. Ah, pois. Compreende-se. The compreende scala here is, is not, it's almost like he's saying in a... One understands it. One gets yes, it. Yes, exactly. He's not speaking about himself. Understanding it, but, but anybody would understand that yes. if you're a, a football lover. Yes, exactly. Ah, pois. Pois is, again, very common. Here it means, um, oh, okay, I get it. Mm. Pois, compreende-se. And I said this most like, or he said it, compreende-se. So the, the E of the compreend is dropped. Compreende-se. Mm -hmm. So say that with me. Pois, compreende-se. And then he said, mas então deixe cá ver. But let me see it then. Cá ver. Cá ver. Cá here is the job that it's doing is almost like uh, here. Let me see it here. Cá ver. It's again, it's the same thing as the la, isn't it really? Sort of thing. Deixe cá ver. Yeah, I guess it's Let easing a little bit. Then. Yeah. Deixe ver. Yeah, deixe ver would be a, bit, a little bit too... Abrupt, um, yeah, deixe cá ver. Mm -hmm. Então, deixe cá ver. And the whole thing, mas então, deixe cá ver. Okay. All right. And then and you I complain. Say, ai, 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 ai. And then yeah. you become very sarcastic. Yeah, but before we uh, move on, so oh. then in English would be um, ao, and in Portuguese, ai, when you hurt yourself. Generally. Yes, yeah. yes, true. All right, so my line, and yes, I'm a little sarcastic because I think you're being a baby. So I say, vá, come on. Depois, later or afterwards, depois, a mãe, the mother, meaning myself, mummy, or mum, uh, depois, a mãe, depois, a mãe. 
Compra um chupa-chupa. Compra, buys, compra, um, one. Chupa-chupa. Lollipop. Chupa, it comes from the verb chupar, which is to... To suck, isn't it? Yeah. Sounds awful, that word, doesn't it? But yeah. There is, I think English, they do know chupa Chupa chups. Is it like a brand? Yeah, it is a brand. For lollipops. Yeah. So chupa chupa, that's what we call a lollipop. I guess in English it makes no sense, as in the brand has no connection to the the actual um, uh, candy or sweet, but in Portuguese it does. Mm. So I wonder if it's uh, either Spanish. Oh, it is Spanish. Oh, there you go. Popular Spanish brand. All I right. guess it comes from the Spanish to suck. Yeah, so they probably say it the same way as well. Chupa yeah. chupa. Okay, so the whole line, vá, depois a mãe, depois a mãe, compra um chupa-chupa, compra um chupa-chupa. Okay, over to you. And then I say, uh, queria ver se fosses tu. I would like to see if it was you. I would like to see you in my position. Queria ver se fosses tu. Se fosses... Se fosses, se fosses tu, if it was you. Queria ver, queria ver, queria ver se fosses tu. Mm -hmm. All right, and the last line of From the, the dialogue. Yeah, so it says bem, well, está realmente muito inchado. It is really uh, very swollen. Está realmente. I think the realmente the... Very. Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Está de veras muito inchado, yeah, would yeah, be an equi or... yeah, a synonym. Está realmente. Está realmente. Muito inchado. Muito inchado. Very swollen, muito inchado. Mas não me parece, but it does not seem to me, mas não me parece. So we miss out the to me. It does not seem, oh no, to me, não me parece. Mas não me parece muito sério. Too serious or very serious. Muito sério. No entanto, however, no entanto, no entanto, vamos fazer, let's do, vamos fazer, um raio X. That's the letter X for you in Portuguese. X, yeah. X. Vamos fazer um raio X. Let's do an X-ray. So the whole line again. Bem, está realmente muito inchado, mas não me parece muito sério. No entanto, vamos fazer um raio X. Well, there you have it. Mm -hmm. now, that, uh, now that you've gone through all this, if you need to go through it, um, once or twice, we have listeners that go through it three, four times, so they get yeah. the grasp of it. However, times, however many times you need to go. And then it. go back to the beginning. That's our advice. And once you feel confident enough, read it at the same time as the uh, well, as we are saying it. Mm. Okay, and make it loud. Don't be afraid. Well, I guess I don't know your um, surroundings, but uh, if you can. Yeah, yeah, don't say, say it in loud. your head. Actually say it out loud if possible. And uh, we keep encouraging everyone to have the transcript in front of you. It makes things a lot easier and it has a much greater impact on your brain, on your memory. Listen to it, but follow it along. And then you can understand what we're trying to say when we break it down. Because sometimes we stop in the middle of a sentence to explain something. Or we, ex we, you know, we explain the little vowels being silent and things like that. So it, it makes it easier for you to understand and, and follow along with our explanations if you are watching what we're doing. Very yeah. good. 
Now then, that's not it for this podcast. No, as you wanted have... to uh, mention an article that uh, you kindly wrote for us, which was brilliant. Yeah, so um, we like to put down on, on ptwoodcar.com slash blog uh, quite a few, well, articles that will help uh, people learn Portuguese and different techniques. I th uh, actually, to be honest with you, a lot of this stuff helps you learn languages in general. But today is quite specific because of all the references and resources that we give you. So the previous article, we taught you how to structure uh, a vocabulary notebook. Well, this one talks about how to fill it up, how to come across new words. And it, it uh, basically divides itself into three possible ways of doing so. Now, these are, in my opinion, uh, the three most important ways in which you can expose yourself to new words. The first one is an obvious one, read a lot. If you notice, most people who have a very good vocabulary in any language are the ones who read Loads. They read books, they read newspapers every day. Uh, they read, read and read because yeah. exposure is the key for this. Um, I talk a little bit on, on the article about something that's mentioned as um, or called by linguists the dimmer switch phenomenon. Dimmer yeah. switch in the sense that when you read a new word, even if you see it in context, you won't understand it straight away. Oh, you and may, but it might be unlikely. Yes, because a word, even if you look, a word in, uh, look up a word in a dictionary, it doesn't really tell you how you can use the word. You have to see it in context, um, some say at least 12 times. Mm. So the dimmer switch in a sense that it's not like dark and then light. It's slowly you come to grips with what the word means, yeah, how it is used in context, context the mm. different ways. So yeah. read a lot. I'll give you a few There's links. There's a couple of yeah, websites that websites that you can use. Show you the word in context, like lingui.pt or .br. Yes. A yeah. Brazilian and a Those Portuguese. really help. Mm. Um, I said here that also the books, Amazon is great for uh, finding books that have European Portuguese authors. Mm -hmm. Bertrand is a good Portuguese uh, um, bookshop. They ship abroad. But somebody, one of your, one of your um, students was, was sent, uh, while well, she read, I guess, the, the article, she said that now, of course, Amazon uh, has e-books mm -hmm. and Bertrand apparently, apparently now also has e-books. That's useful because if you have them in, in, in a specific format, uh, when you import it into your iPad or e-reader, uh, Kindle, whatever, uh, many of them have built-in dictionaries. So you can type on a word and or just tap on it rather click, click and it will it, yeah. come up with the definition or the translation in portuguese uh, so that's really useful so that's reading the second one is listening you must listen to portuguese i do this myself i live in the uk and so i listen to portuguese radio all the time so i keep uh, my vocabulary going if you don't listen to it you'll forget it yeah um, yeah because we're natives but it's incredible how yeah. uh it's it's been a long time since we've lived um in the uk and we left portugal, portugal. we just obviously we visit portugal as often as we can to see relatives and friends and obviously we miss it the weather and the food but uh but it's incredible how uh, how uh, we can actually lose uh, some yeah. of the, the words and expressions that we've once used so commonly and so uh, often. Yeah, it's well known that even those that are called hyperpolyglots, so people that know loads and loads of languages, when, when doing tests with these people, none can have a, a language, can hold a language or, or more than four to six languages at a time in a native capacity. Um, they will lose it. Even those people with incredible memories, they have to, before they go into a country, they have to refresh. So uh, radio is important. TSF is one of my favorite radios for this. Yeah, I one give of you... the students actually loves it. He's, he, he plays it every day. Yeah. That's, if there's one thing he does, you know, uh, with um, practicing his Portuguese is listening to the TSF radio. So great recommendation. Because it's one of those talk languages. So mm. BBC4, for example, would yeah. be an equivalent. One great program I listen to all the time is Forum uh, that runs, I think it's about 20 past 10 till about 12. Uh, that's during the week. And people call in. So you get an idea of colloquial vernacular Portuguese. Uh, so that's great. Now, I've actually sent, I you know, have a link there on, on, the, um, on the site so you can go straight to it uh, and to recorded ones. I guess they do a podcast version of the Forum. 
And also TV. This is a bit tricky because, of course, uh, TV doesn't always have transcripts. Uh, I do send give you a link for the Portuguese um, t- television or a channel called RTP. That's the National, I guess, Public Television. Mm-hmm. And some of their programs have transcripts. They don't always like word by word. No, no, that's true. But they, they, they can but be But it's really still helpful. helpful, yeah. And sometimes they have like, I can't remember what the word was, but it's like a summary of the episode. You click on the episode or you have synopsis. the episode in front of you. That's right, yeah, synops. And uh, and it's there, the summary. So maybe if you understand the gist of the episode, yes, you know, by reading the, the, the synops, uh, then it should be a great help for you to understand the dialogue between the characters. I'll give you a few more. I won't, I won't talk about all of them here. Just go uh, portugueswithcar.com slash blog or ptwithcar.com slash blog. We have our podcast um, flashcards. So every podcast, except the review ones, we have flashcards. So you can listen. We record every single word, me or Carla. So you can listen to the, the words being pronounced in a European Portuguese. I'll give you the, uh, this is might be unusual, uh, but Je- the Jehovah's Witnesses website actually has quite a lot of material in European Portuguese, and they have the recording as well. Of yeah, the that's the advantage of it, isn't it? There's uh, the audio uh, format because it's so so difficult to find audiobooks in uh, European Portuguese. So there's the advantage of this website that you'll find the articles uh, in the written form, but also in the audio form yeah. in Portuguese European. Yeah, quite a lot of people um, take advantage of that. Um, in fact, you can just tap on a paragraph and, and it, will, uh, it will come up with a play uh, button so you can listen to it. Carla mentioned lingui.com, lexico.pt is another one to see words in context. Now, I said three. So the first one, first technique, read. Second, listen or watch, I guess, and listen. And the third, which is a, a, perhaps an unusual one, but enrich your English vocabulary. Why do I say that? Well, let me just give you a few words and see if you recognize them. Okay, these are English words. Bifurcation, to seed, obviously that's a verb, to air, to divagate, to provise, what about some other words, uh, fuscus, uh, to castigate, uh, delineate, banal, so do you know any of these words? Probably you know one or two. For me and Carla, these words are quite uh, easy to come by. We, we, we understand all these English words because the Portuguese version, the Portuguese cognate, is, um, is used commonly. So, for example, we have bifurcação, ceder, errar. It's a very common verb. Uh, banal, meaning mm. something that's common. Um, and a few others that I said, to castigate, that means to punish. Castigar. Castigar very, very used in Portuguese. Yes. So because English is 70% Latin and Greek, in Portuguese is almost, well, it's not 100% because it has a few Arab uh, influences. Uh, yes. It, it is very much Latin and Greek. So we'll find some similarities. Yes, it will always find similarities. So build your English vocabulary, read English, I guess. That would be fancy English, really, because it's not common words uh, amongst the, the yes. common people, really, but uh, but it's still useful. I mean, if you're reading books, you'll come across some of these words easily, won't you? So yes. So anyway, it's there if you want to have a look at it. Um, there's quite a lot of links on that on that uh, website that would only be useful on that blog post, rather that would only be useful for European Portuguese. Yeah. Righty. So um, you may be listening to this podcast on YouTube, but if you're not, then just know that you can find uh, all of these podcasts or most of them on YouTube channel, um, y- youtube.com slash Portuguese with Carl. That is right. And uh, you can find a couple of videos that we've done on the streets of Lisbon. We, uh, we're hoping to, uh, to go back soon to do some more, maybe in a different city or in a different town in Portugal. And yeah, and uh, uh, Twitter you wanted to, uh, to mention, didn't you? Yeah. That you can find us there, PT with Carla. Very good. Yeah. I think that's it for today, Carla. Yeah. As I know. Let I me reach so. out. Oh, also the Facebook ah. page. I okay. tend to post the... Uh, the the um, the articles there, the link for the articles that uh, Marlon has been writing, and and to post the um, the links for the podcasts as well that take you straight on to uh, 
YouTube. So um, please visit the page, give us a like if you're on Facebook, and that's Portuguese with Carla. Very good. Let's put the end jingle, Carl, so we can Alrighty. say our goodbyes. Okay, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye.